All right, guys, it's time to get real. Inflation is out of control. Gas is high. Car prices, new cars, are, ridiculous, are ridiculously overpriced. Car dealers are now backing up with inventory. Trucks, they want 90K for a freaking pickup truck. A super, super base two-door uh, pickup truck, maybe 50,000, but you want to get a nice Tundra, you want to get a, a Dodge Ram, a Ford Raptor F-150 or whatever. Uh, even the base Chevy pickups, 90K baby. And the dealerships are feeling the pinch. No one is buying these things. Before, you couldn't find the trucks. You couldn't find cars. It was hard to get them. Supply chain issues, stuff like that. But not now, man. People are going, wait a minute. My wages have not increased. Prices are 90K. On average, you got to, you know, factoring in tax, tags, license, all that crap. Holy crap, people are just saying enough. This is redonkulous. Uh, yeah, what do you do, man? What do you do? You got to save your money. It's getting bad, folks. It's getting bad. They're kicking the can down the road. They're fudging the numbers on, uh, on uh, how well the economy is doing. Uh, I think they're, they're kind of lifting it up. They're pumping it up because we are going into an election year. You cannot have the economy fall flat. And uh, back in the old days, they said, it's the economy, stupid. That is what people really care about mostly, how it affects their bottom line. And right now, you just can't be going out. Most normal people who are financially responsible are not going out buying new shiny objects. The people that don't care, who are uh, you know, taking their student loan debt forgiveness and buying cars, that's, that's them, or they're paying everything on credit cards and kicking that can down the road with 20, 30% interest rates. That's their problem. I want to be financially responsible, but in the end, I'll probably end up paying. I don't know. It's the good people that get fleeced, but we'll see. I know the banks want their money, so you can kick the can down the road for mortgage for forbearance and all that stuff, but you got to pay the piper eventually. The banks want their money. If they don't get it, they're going to come take your house or kick you out of your apartment, whatever. Anyway, let's get into it. So how do you get around this car, overpriced cars, Overprice anything and say you need a car. Uh, not saying you have to go buy a new car. I found this article. It says, these are the cars you can trust to last 200,000 miles. You want that metric more than anything. You want to make sure it's going to last. The quality of the parts. Um, most mechanics or even DIYers will tell you if you're working on a car and you replace a part with an aftermarket part, they're not as good as the OEM original equipment manufactured part. So you want to make sure you have good quality OEM parts and that the car will last. So let's go through this. Let's go through it together. But first, as I always do, let's get my cursor up. Cursor. So we can all follow the mount bouncing green ball, the green circle. There it is. See that? Hello, doggy. All right, let's rock. So buying a car is a major investment. Not only does it need to get you safely, blah, 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 we get it. The uh, vehicle should also be reliable. My God, I own the Jeep. I bought it used. The clutch went out on it twice. Piece of crap. Uh, I, you, you get to the point where you can't buy stuff just because it's cute. You got to buy stuff that is reliable. I went and dumped that thing and got a freaking Toyota. Anyway, oh, I gave it away. Anyway, let's go. Uh, let's see, however, rather than determining if a car is good by how long it lasts, experts, whatever an expert is, guys, life lesson, an expert is just someone that read the article a day before you read it. That's all an expert is, come on. All right, experts recommend going by how many miles you can accrue on it without encountering any major issues. For example, a car with 100K, miles in five years that only needed maintenance oil change tire rotation for example would be considered better than a car with a hundred thousand miles in seven years but needed major repairs like i had a ford transmission went on the truck boom i just donated to purple heart i said it's not the cost of the vehicle the resale it's just almost was total based on the price to fix the freaking transmission was more than the value of the truck donated to purple heart one of those, one of those uh, service guys was able to fix it up, work on it, gave him something to do, 
and helped him out a lot and got it out of my driveway where it was leaking transmission fluid everywhere. Ford found on road dead. All right, here is a list of 12 cars you can trust to last 200,000 miles with just routine maintenance. Now I'm gonna add to that, rotate your tires, it's on there, oil change, yeah, when the oil starts getting dark and low, just change it. Uh, you can do it yourself. It's a bit messy, but just you can do it yourself and dump the oil at a city oil dump, you know, oil recycling place. They have those all over. Or you can pay someone to do it. It's your call. Uh, other things is check your batteries. Also, clean the thing. Keep your car clean. If you're in the Northeast where they use salt or even if, you know, you just got to get in the other carriage. Hose it down and then... What I also do, the stuff they use on outboard motors in the ocean, Yama Shield. It's a engine protectant coating. It coats your wires, it coats your engine, it coats undercarriage stuff. And on boats, you put it on the inside of the outboard and the outside, just keeps the corrosion down and keeps it lubricated. It's called Yama Shield. I use it, I think it's secret sauce. I use it on my bicycles, my motorcycles, my car, uh, and the boat, of course, right? Yeah, I work on boats, so yeah, it, it does make a difference. It just keeps that corrosion down, especially in the Northeast. Just spray around where the wheel well is, up underneath. You'll get under the car and see where things are rusting. Just spray the crap down. All right, let's go. Here is the list. No, 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 no. Let's see. Is there any particular order? I don't even think uh, there's an order here. They're just listing the 12 cars. And no surprise, Toyota. I've never owned a Honda. I think the only nit I didn't like about a Honda is the lights don't turn off like Toyotas do when you pull turn the ignition off. I don't know. I may be wrong. They may have fixed that or changed it. But Toyota Camry, yes. Anything Toyota, you pay a few more bucks. Well, not now. It's ridiculous how much Tundras cost and any truck in general cost. But back in normal days, before the dark times, before the empire, you could actually uh, get a car and go shop and Toyota's cost a few more bucks but geez they are gonna last you take care of them not over the top take care of them just general maintenance it's not that hard keep your tires inflated too temperature changes in the outside going from uh, summer to you know, fall to winter your tire the air compresses condenses whatever expands in the heat it's gonna affect your tire pressure go adjust it after you, you know, do it before you drive the car too because driving your tires is gonna make the tire pressure go up through the heat the friction, right? It's not that hard. You can buy a little tool at Home Depot with a little battery on a compressor. It's easy peasy. No need to go to the gas station and put a quarter or 50 cents in to try to fill your tires. It, no, just buy the tool. Make it easy and uh, do it in your driveway. All right, Camry, Honda Accord. I've always liked the Accord. It just seems to be the staple of an automobile. Nothing flashy gets you from A to B. Same with the Camry. A to B is all you want. Who cares what car you have to make it look flashy? That's just a fool's errand. You're keeping up with the Joneses. And the you know, secret about that, you know, is the Joneses are broke. So Camry, we got a Cord, another Honda CRV, smaller car. Toyota Prius, I guess. That to me, yeah, that's a stigma thing. Uh Let's see. What's the joke on the uh, usual suspects? It's like you're driving inside of a vagina. <laughs> oh, the usual guys. What is it with Will Farrell and Mark, Mark Wahlberg? The usual guys. All right, let's see. We got Toyota Senna, Sienna. Now that's, if in lieu of getting a pickup truck, in hindsight, I wish I would have got either a, a van or a minivan like this because you can haul everything and then it's more secure. People can't really break in as easily as they do in pickup trucks in the back of the bed. Uh, having a SUV, I mean the Sienna is, I don't know, or a Highlander, which is a baby SUV, would have been gold. I, hindsight 2020, right? Uh, let's see, F-150. I don't know, I'm always cautious of buying anything union built in America, I mean, uh, Toyota is built in America, most of the vehicle, the trucks in that, but they're non-union. You get a union involved, and I think the level of mediocrity goes down because, hey, I got a job. What are you going to do? Fire me? You know, typical like a government, federal government worker, they don't care. All right, let's see. Seven, Toyota Corolla. Oh, my God. It's all, yeah, baby. Toyota Highlander. Toyota 4Runner. Toyota Tacoma. So I own, I don't, they don't have the big one on here. 
Sequoia. All right. Forerunner's really cramped inside. Tacoma's not a bad little truck. It does everything you need with a big truck. Yeah, I, I live in a small area. Not much room. And I see guys with these big trucks. Some have dualies. Some, what the hell are you doing? Where are you going to park that? How are you going to fit down the roads? It's so stupid. Get a little Toyota Tacoma. It does the same stuff. You can haul stuff with it. It's just not a macho thing, I guess. I mean, I like big trucks and lifted trucks, but for the area, it just doesn't make sense. Plus, you're sucking all that gas down. All right, number 11, Honda Civic. Oh, let's see. And then the Honda Pilot, which is their kind of equivalent, man, eh, to a Toyota Sienna. There's the Ford 150, Honda Pilot, Camry. Yeah, there was a good line in Dexter in one of the first earlier seasons. He drove the most boring car. I think it was like a Chevy Impala or something. Because he never, he even made the comment, I don't understand the fascination with people buying fancy, shiny cars that stick out and make you unique. Because he just wanted to blend in. And it worked. It got from A to B. And it was nondescript. It was a white car. Everyone, you know, majority cars are white, right? And uh, it just looked like any other car. And you just blend it in. So it, it worked. and got from A to B. And it was inexpensive. So... Yeah, so here we go. Look at these cars. If you want them to last over 200K, keep them, keep them protected. Main, do basic maintenance on it, and you should be good to go. And uh, beat the man at his own game, because if you want to go out every, what, four years, like you buy a Dodge Ram truck, that thing's going to break down within four years, right? Then you're going to be spending all that uh, labor, repairs, parts, just to get that thing running, and it won't be running as if it were new. And uh, why do that? Just go get a car. You know you're going you're gonna to run that thing over 200K and then some. And uh, father-in-law had Hondas. He did well over uh, 200K. And uh, I think now he's got another Honda, the truck, the little truck version. I forgot what it was called. Ridgeline. So he's got that. Uh, he swears by it. That's great. And at last, not buying new cars is the secret to uh, building your wealth. And uh, yeah, being financially independent because you keep dropping money every. I'm gonna every two years I'm gonna buy a new BMW or just pay all this maintenance cost. And uh, don't do it. Just get smart with your purchases. So anyway, here we go. Look at the list. I'll leave it up here for a second. You can snapshot it and uh, go forth. And uh, yeah, prepare. I think the economy is gonna get a lot, lot worse. Uh, home builders are cutting prices. New home builders are cutting their inventory prices. They built a lot of homes. Based on the economy, a couple of years ago, they were already in the budget. They're going to build these things. Boom. Now we are in, in such bad times. They have to cut these things. They're not getting buyers. They're sending messages, emails out to realtors in the area saying, we'll increase your reward, your, your commission, your bonus. If you get a buyer in here to buy this uh, house from us, because we got to dump our inventory because we do not want to be left holding the bag. And that's where they're at now. Now what happens there with the uh, new house stuff, new builders, existing market now has to compete with the new housing market. And it happened in one of my areas. We had existing house and all around us, every cornfield was being leveled to put up these McMansions. It was ridiculous, just raping up the countryside. And you put up these McMansions and then you're fighting the pricing of the new builders, Toll Brothers, Pulte, uh, all these things. I forget most of the names. Uh, Ryland, Ryan, all these homes, builder, all these home builders. You're fighting them, trying to sell your house, which is maybe you now six years old. Yeah, the pro is you don't want to move into a new neighborhood because there's always going to be construction, nails, roads aren't finished, dirt. It's, it's disgusting. I would never do it again. I would buy existing in an established neighborhood. But yeah, that's going down. Wages are not keeping up. If you want to go buy a sector, tech sector has been laying off massively. Uh, Silicon Valley is, they're canning everybody. You know what I mean? They might be keeping the core engineers, but all the uh, periphery people, boom. Look at Twitter. He Musk went in there, fired 80% because they're mostly just ide ideologues who are censoring people. They weren't engineers. It just shows you, from my experience, 
20% of the people do all the work. 80% are just sucking off the uh, government teat or whatever, just, you know, welfare, white collar welfare. So also with these tech companies, they want H-1B visa people because you can pay them less. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not looking good. Uh, what else is happening? Interest rates are holding. Will they go up? Will they go down? Nobody knows. Um, yeah, I just think they're fudging numbers with the economy. So just prepare. Uh, we're banking more cyber attacks now. I think uh, one of the food processing companies was hacked. And then what, what happens there is it puts a hold on everything, orders, stuff like that. Boom, food supply chain gets interrupted. Also banking stuff. Say you get a check from the government. Say you get a, a loan repayment or a school debt forgiveness, whatever that stuff is, or you get a tax refund. And you deposit it in your account. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, all these banks, you deposit a, a hefty sum over your normal deposits, your behavior is different. Uh, they flag your account and they will freeze your account and you are locked out of your own money until they resolve the issue. It's almost Orwellian. It's almost like Canada did where they went way over the line and they froze people's accounts just because they were practicing their right to protest an authoritarian government. Go, man, it's coming, guys. It's not going to be pretty. It's getting bad. Uh, what am I doing? I'm trying to get more stuff into cash. So like, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Her, uh, Berkshire Hathaway guy. I always forget his name, man. It's just never, he's going to cash. He's buying some stocks yet, but he is going a lot to cash for when the economy drops out. And I'm going to look his name up. Warren Buffett, I always forget, man. The guy's like 99 years old. I mean, why do these people live forever? I don't know. There's some kind of secret sauce there. But anyway, he's going to cash, I read. So I don't know, prepare. And one of those ways to prepare is don't buy shiny objects. And uh, yeah, and look at that car list. It may, uh, it's just a smart way to go. All right, that's all I got. Long video about nothing, but uh, thought this was interesting. Again, it's mostly Toyota, Honda. Go figure. All right. Hope this helps. If you like this video, thank you. <laughs> and I'll talk to you all later. Have a good day.